In this lecture, we'll be talking about Docker image registry. In our last lecture, we saw how we can build a Docker image, at least to understand the Docker networking, we build an image. But we have seen that these images that we have built always sits within our local machine and it's never been pushed to a centralized place. And consider that if you wanted to use the Docker image that you have built in multiple different places, you may need to have a centralized location. Pretty much like how in GitHub, we write a code in our local machine and push the code to the GitHub and use the code from anywhere across the globe or from among the team members. That's the central location where our code sits. That's exactly how Docker image registry acts as well. So the image that we have built within our local machine sits within our local machine in Docker desktop has to be used by other team members as well because that's the application that we use all the time. And you, we have seen that the Nginx application or the SQL Server application that is available as an Docker image, we download from Docker Hub and we use it in our local machine. But it was somehow built in somebody's local machine and been pushed into Docker Hub so that it is used by us from our local machine. That is exactly what we are going to be doing in this particular lecture. We are going to see how an image can be pushed into a centralized image registry and we can use it from across. So basically an image registry is a centralized location for storing and sharing your container images and it can be either public or private. And Docker Hub is the public registry that anyone can use it as a default registry, which we already know because Docker Hub is automatically going to be pointed while we try to pull any image. But if you want to consider some other image registry, well, we also have that option. We can use Amazon ECR or Elastic Container Registry or ACR Azure Container Registry and Google Container Registry GCR to download the image from. So these are the different image registries available. There are also some third party registries available that you can use to download the image. But again, those are something not the scope of this particular series, but you can use it pretty much like in whatever that your organization really use, you can use them as well. I hope you got the idea of the image registry. Now, first of all, understand what are the things that we need to work with this Docker Hub to push an image into. So we are gonna first create a Docker Hub login and then we need to build a Docker image and then we need to push the Docker image using the push command. That's what we'll be doing. This Docker building an image we have already did in our last lecture, so I'm just gonna use it. But I'm gonna be talking about how to build an image from the scratch using the Docker file and then how you can work with multi-layered Docker images and stuff, which is going to be something we'll be discussing later in this particular series. But at least for now, we are just going to use the image that we built in our last lecture. So let's see how we can push our first image to the Docker Hub and how we can see those images in the registry. So in order to push the image to the Docker Hub, we need to first of all log into the hub.docker.com. If you're already not signed up for this hub.docker.com, I do recommend you to please do so because once you have it, you can then start using it. I have already signed up to hubdoc.docker.com and the good thing about this particular signing in to the Docker Hub is that you can also log in into your Docker desktop as well. You see that in Docker desktop, you also have this sign in button. So once you hit this sign in, it is gonna ask you for signing into the Docker Hub. You can do that as well, pretty much like how you do a sign in from here. I have already signed in to my hub.docker.com so if i try to log in once again using my username and password then you should see that it is going to log in for me and you will also notice that once i log in i have already pushed an image all the way like four years ago and that's the image which is shown up over here and you see that it, there is not a quite a lot of details available but somehow it's been used in my other courses and that's the reason why it is also been pulled like 72 times by my students, I guess it's from my Udemy course. But now we are gonna see how we can actually push an image to this repository over here. So you see that I have already created a repository called as execute automation. So for the free account, you can keep on creating any number of registry, which is gonna be public. But if you want to create a private registry, then you can actually create only one private repository into your account for this particular registry that is most important but if you are a paid user for this docker hub then you should create multiple different private repositories which is going to be hiding from the outside world 
like other organizations would be using the private repository for that matter uh, but at least for our demonstration purpose we don't really require to go that complexity i'm just going to use the repository that i'm going to be creating which is the execute automation repository so you may need to create a repository over here and i'll tell you why this repository is so important so once we have this repository being created i'm going to see how we can push the image to this particular registry or the image registry so in order to do that i'm going to go into the docker hub i guess it's already been logged in but let's try to see if it's yeah there we go and you see that now i can also sign in into my credential over here and it is signed in at the moment so which is awesome so this is going to help me log into my account execute automation and i can get the information pretty much like how we were getting before there's no big deal but now i want to push this product api into my docker repository so how do i actually do that so in order to do that if i see these three dots over here if i click this and if i try to push the image to the docker hub over there you will notice that it is going to start pushing the image but then it fails saying the requested access to the resource is denied so you can't directly go and hit this push to docker hub directly like this because you need to do a bit of modification in this particular image that we have got basically we need to add a what is called as tag with the registry as the prefix for that particular image and i'll tell you what i really mean about that if you remember all the times where you try to download an nginx image or a microsoft sql server image you will always see there is going to be a tag and also there is a big name over here and this is something which is very very important i mean this is the registry and the image name and there is a colon of the version which is available over here and that's exactly what we need to do it for our image as well so if i just go over here to our command prompt and let me try to minimize this and if i try to do a docker tag and if i give a tag name for my product api image that we have got and then following that we need to give the repository name which is going to be the execute automation this repository name so i'm going to get execute automation slash image name which is going to be pushed so it's going to be product api or you can give any name for that matter i'm just going to keep the name as product api for now and i'm going to give a version if i wanted to so if, let's say if i want to give a version as 1.0 i can also do that over here and once i do this you will notice that i have tagged this product api image into this name the product api but before that i need to prefix this with the execute automation repository only that the docker hub knows that where it has to be pushed into my account because i can have multiple repository who cares and i need to push that image exactly that to that particular repository so repository is more like a directory where this particular image is going to be pushed into and then we also need to version this particular product api because tomorrow if this product api changes the different version you can also version it to 1.0.1 or 2.0 something like that now if i just say docker images you will notice that i have also got an image with the exit automation slash product api and there is a version tagged as 1.0 and this image is exactly the same image of this one you see that the image id is exactly the same there is no difference and the created hours is also four hours ago so there is no big difference between both of them in fact we are just giving a tag for this particular image that's all and now if i just go to the docker hub and if i try to push it from here it is just going to work but i'm going to show you from the command line like how you can do it you just have to do docker push and then execute automation slash product api and if you do it and also make sure that you don't miss the tag because you see that by default it's going to be taking the latest tag so we need to give that 1.0 and then push it and you will notice that it is starting to push the image into our registry which is the docker hub registry so we will just wait for this whole pushing to happen and you will notice that magically all the 
code that we have, all the images that we have created with all the layerings is all going to be pushed into one central repository, which is in the hub.docker.com. And once it is done, you can tell anybody from across the globe who is sitting in any part of the world to pull this image from this particular registry and this particular repository, they could able to pull that as well. So if I just go over here to my hub.docker.com and if I try to refresh this particular page right now, you'll notice that we also have got the product API. And if I click this and notice that this is a public repository. Uh, and if I click this particular repository, you'll notice the image, you will notice that it shows that the tag is 1.0 and this is an image type, uh, which is a few seconds ago, I have pushed it. And also it has all the different tags if it had one. And then you'll also notice that build or collaborators or any web hooks available, something like that. You can see all those details over here, but unfortunately we don't have any of this. And you see that what are the things sitting in this particular image layer? is also going to come up for you over here. So tomorrow, if I say that, hey, Karthik, I'm going to add a new code feature like 2.0 or 3.0, I can also add that into the same image. And if I push it over there, then it is just going to be pushed into this image. And this particular tag is going to be changed from 1.0. And there's going to be another tag like 2.0. And then you can keep on going from there. So this is how we can use the centralized repository to push an image into the Docker Hub. And now you may ask like, hey, Karthik, how do I pull the image into my local machine? Well, in order to do that, it is very, very straightforward because you know the entire name of this particular repository and the image. So you can just copy that and just say Docker pull and this particular exit automation, which is the repository slash the image colon the tag. And if I hit enter, you will notice that it is going to start downloading it, but it tells you that currently it is up to date, meaning this image is up to date and there is nothing to download within your local machine. But let's say if I'm going to delete this particular image from here, and if I'm going to pull the image right now within my local machine, you'll notice that it's going to download the image. And there you go. We have an image for this particular product over here. And then if I go back to the product API, hopefully the count increases from zero to one. So if I try to refresh this page, you'll notice that the count should ideally increase, but unfortunately it's not. Maybe it's taking some time because the API needs to refresh to know that the image has been downloaded. Uh, for some reason, it is taking a bit of a time, but usually it does. So yeah, this is how you can actually download the image from the remote machine. I mean, while you are watching this particular video, you can also download this image. I'm not going to delete this particular image from this repository. It's going to be staying here. So you can try downloading it from your machine and you should see that it is just going to work fine. Like the exact same command that I have used, it just should work. So that's it guys. This is how we can work with Docker image registry to push an image and pull an image into our local and from our local machine.